So today in this talk, we are going to discuss how to write API conversions for CRDs. But before uh, directly jumping to the topic, let me first introduce myself. I am Shivani Singhal and here are my contribution. It was a video but still it's not playing. And uh, yeah, you can find me on LinkedIn, Twitter, GitHub and um, working at VMware as a member of technical staff. So majorly I'm contributing to Cluster API Lifecycle and it's provider for AWS and I have my colleagues here also. So feel free if you have any questions on it and we are open to answer. Yeah, uh, I am Madhur Agarwal. I am also working with Shivani in Cluster API. I'm a member of Kubernetes 6 and uh, yeah, let's start. <laughs> So uh, before jumping to discussing on how to write, let's first try to understand why we choose this topic. So during my initial development cycle, I need to do a lot of changes in API, sometimes support new API versions. And while making those changes in the existing API, I found a lot of difficulty whenever I need to introduce some changes. It breaks the contract. And when you have to move or add, edit any new field in the new version, this is like a nightmare. And during, uh, like when I start developing, I learned, I found like all the new contributors face similar issue. Many contributors even left their PRs in between because they are not able to get the required support. And there are also very less content that we found in the internet over this topic. So this motivated us to go ahead with this talk. Yeah, so before directly jumping to writing conversions, uh, we'll first try to understand why do we need API conversions. So uh, basically Kubernetes is based on declarative APIs and uh, we know APIs evolve over time and we generally start with a version like v1 alpha 1 then move to beta 1 and then v1. And uh, then after in this process, when we are moving to a new version, we need to support the existing versions for our clients who are still using the existing version. So that becomes challenging because we are storing in the storage layer of Kubernetes. We are storing only the only, we can store only one representation of the object, but the users can query different representations or different versions of the object. So somehow we need to convert the versions while serving the objects to the users. So like uh, let's understand it with an example. So, so we have a project, uh, which is a Kubernetes project and we have a kind, let's say user. And uh, in that user, we have details like the name of the user, the age and the passport number, which is a string. And uh, later on, we felt the need that we need the issue date and the expiry date of the passport as well. So, so we introduced a new version V2. And as you can see, we have introduced the passport detail struct along with the passport number, issue date and expiry date. So, yeah. uh, so we understand the API conversion with a with example. So we have this uh, this cute person like Daniel, who is operating and using the V2 version of our project. So he tries to apply some YAML with uh, with a spec like age, name, passport details. So just look at this. Here we are providing the expiry date and issue date along with the passport number. So what happens when this user in V2 version apply the sample object? The request goes to the Kubernetes API server. Then API server sends this request to store this object into the etcd. And in our project, our uh, uh, storage version is v2. So this YAML object store as it is in our etcd. But what happens when a new person, Jesse, so this, this Jesse was inspired from the Breaking Bad and recently started watching. So when he tries to read the same object, in v1 version then what happens because our object stored in v2 format in our ET etcd what happens with him when he tries to fetch the same object so let's see we have uh, on the left hand side the original v2 object that daniel applied and we can see on the right hand side the v1 object that the person fetched who is operating in the older version so where did the passport detail goes so we see that there is a data loss. If there are no conversions, then we can miss out some fields. So there is one more example. In the previous example, I showed you where a person in the latest object tries to write some object. With this one, this is the person who is who tries to create a V1 object in old version. He passes the passport number, age and name. 
when he tries to write it it goes again to the api server and stored in uh, etcd but in v2 format just remember our storage version is v2 so what happens when he saves that object the in the saved object we again lost the passport number so all the fields that are same they still persist but those who are different api server don't know how to write the conversion so we lose those fields so uh, how can we solve this issue so uh, so as we saw in the example that when daniel wrote the object in v2 and the storage version was v2 the object was stored successfully but when uh, jesse was trying to read the object in v1 uh he he suffered the data was lost during conversion so ideally we just have to write the conversions and we somehow uh i think it, i you lost okay the yeah. data and voice both <laughs> <laughs> yeah so basically we have to write the conversion functions and somehow let the api server know that it has to call it while serving jesse so so now we understand that uh, we need to write conversions when we are trying to convert from one version to another but uh, that means like uh, we need to write conversions between any pair of versions during conversion but no that's not it because uh, we follow a hub and spoke model to reduce the number of conversions that we have to write so we choose a version as a hub and rest of the versions we call them spoke and as you can see in the figure on the right side that when we have to convert a version to another version we con first convert the version to hub and then convert from the hub to another version so that way we just have to write very uh, few number we only have to write the conversions between the hub and all the spokes so as you can see the redu reduction in the number of conversion functions using hub and spoke and uh, next thing is uh, what will happen like we we know that v1 ha has some fields but v2 has some extra fields like issue date and expiry date so how do we preserve them when Uh, we are converting from v2 to v1 and uh, once the object is in v1 when we try to do a round trip that is convert back to v2 we might lose the field so to preserve that data annotations come into picture so i'll explain it through this example so we have the original v2 object which is user and it is in v it has the expiry date issue date and passport number in passport detail and when i am converting the v2 object to v1 uh, the v1 I will store the passport number it's uh, somehow yeah. 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 okay yeah thank you so as where was i yeah so v1 object uh, when we are converting the v2 to the v1 uh, we can store the passport number in that field but what about the issue date and expiry date so for preserving those fields what we do is we store the entire v2 object in the annotations of v1 object and that way when we are converting back to v2 we can refer that annotation and uh, preserve the v2 fields that uh, with this way we'll be able to manage uh, or restore the data while converting between versions so we'll understand all this theory now with a demo i think then it will be more clear we cannot like take the because there is some issue with live streaming but yeah i will play it here let's see how it goes yeah so first i uh, will create a regex demo project it's a kubernetes project and i am using a cube builder for it so i initialize it the go modules and the initialize the cube builder project with a domain as gov.io and uh, so in this we'll create uh, the api structure first i'll create the v1 api with a group as info and uh, kind is user so for this first api we'll create the resources sorry there's a typo in the video as well and then the controller we'll see the directory structure so we can see that in the v1 we have the user spec uh, this is the default that we go, get with the cube builder we updated it then i'll create the v2 api this time only resources no controllers and next 
we'll see the v2 api structure and update it as well with the passport detail struct that contains the issue date expiry date and the passport number and we add the storage version also this will tell the etcd in which format they have to store the object representations we do the manifest after this we add the custom resource definition for the kind in our project and we can see it in the config folder basis there is our uh, custom resource user with the two api versions definitions v1 and v2 here we go now we'll see the whether we have any existing crds to double check no we don't have we'll do we install them with the make install and uh, here we have the crd for the user so uh, now i'm going to apply the uh, use case that i've shown you in the slide i'm applying the v2 yaml with the name age and passport detail so i'm going to apply this and create a user sample object in v2 format this object is created when i try to fetch it now i'll fetch it in v2 format everything looks great because our storage version is v2 we applied the v2 object but let's see what happens okay i'm a bit slow here uh trying to fetch it in v1 then we'll see whether we get the same thing or is there any difference so yes i fetched it and we can see i lost the passport detail now i have no track where that user passport details are <coughs> okay so now we'll apply a v1 and uh, let's uh, so basically the we know that we are applying a v1 but the etcd has a storage version of v2 so uh, api server has no way to convert the data so we we'll ex we are expecting some issues here so v1 is applied some typo yeah so as we saw that uh, v1 is applied but when we try to fetch it the passport number that we had filled it is not there so that's uh, that's a issue and uh, we'll also check in uh, basically we try to store passport number but it is still not uh, present in the etcd itself so whether the we query through v1 or v2 we won't get it now so the solution is conversions so now we'll write it so for writing conversions we have a automated tool uh, which is conversion gen but uh, we'll uh, now we'll use it and try to see what uh, how we can use it but still it has some uh, manual conversions required which can be pretty complicated for new developers so that was the motivation of our video we found a very lack of content on this so uh, i hope this will help uh, many so so first we need to create a conversion.go file and we define the v2 version as our hub so we have to declare a implement this function and uh, then in the v1 we will add a doc.go file and on the package level we have to add some tags so these tags uh, tell the tool conversion gen that it has to write conversions for uh, for v1 take uh, assuming that the hub is v2 so just uh, so we are just here showing that we have a binary of conversion gen present here and now we'll run the command of that tool so you can see this command so we are giving the input directory as v1 and we have defined v2 as the hub so we don't need to give it here and the build tag is you can ignore this for now output file we are giving as zz underscore generated dot conversion so this is the file that we are expecting will contain all the conversion code so let's run it so we have recorded this it, it this command takes a lot of time but here it won't because we have skipped it in the video yeah so as you can see it is it has run successfully but it is giving certain warnings that it was unable to convert certain fields uh, like passport number which was missing in one version present in another and passport detail which was the same case so let's see uh, now what is the status of our repository after this 
So if we see the ZZ generated deep uh, conversion.go file is created, we'll go through this file and you can see that auto convert functions from V1 to V2 is written, V2 is to V1 is written, but we are getting certain warnings that uh, password number, password detail required ma manual conversion. So it means this, uh, we cannot rely only on conversion gen to do the conversions for us and we are done and conversion and it, it can handle for certain cases like where the fields are totally same in both the versions like we like the name and age it is able to do that but any other complicated stuff it it will just ask for manual override so now we'll uh, add like how to add this thing and make it running so we can see certain functions it has left for us to write uh, it has not written the conversion for the red red functions that we can see so we'll write a conversion.go file in v1 and uh, yeah so in this file we can see this this file has to be written manually by us and we have to write convert to and convert from functions and uh, let's go through each function uh, on a high level so we have written a convert v2 to v1 user spec the the third function yeah uh, this one so we and uh, we'll open this function convert v2 to v1 and we can see that we are calling the auto convert and uh, similarly for the next function we'll also in the auto convert we know that it will just manage the uh, common fields so similarly for v1 to v2 we are writing the convert functions we are simply delegating it to auto convert function but uh, now we need to handle this uh, passport number passport detail somehow so that we have to write the logic in convert to function. So if you see here, uh, we are calling on line number 15, the convert v1 to v2 that we are calling below. But after that, what we are doing is uh, we are in this function, we are converting from v1 to v2. So we are checking if v1 has uh, the annotation of v2 present, like we saw in the previous slide. So if v2 is present uh, in the annotation, then we are restoring the data from annotation. Otherwise, we are manually adding it. So uh, the deep dive implementation, we can you can go through our repository. For now, we'll uh, move ahead. So this way, we are doing the restoration of the fields that conversion then could not do. And similarly, in convert from function, we have to uh, handle this somehow. Okay, so we'll we'll move to the convert from function. So convert from converts from v2 to v1. So while we are converting from v2 to v1, we need to store uh, the v2 object in the annotations of v1. So as you can see, the Marshall data is the function that is doing this for us. Uh, so that later in the convert to method, this annotation can be reused. Okay, so we have some some other function was missing. So we are adding that here. So as you can see, it's a bit involved. And uh, I like personally experienced we have personally experienced that it's involved for everyone. It's pretty overwhelming for especially newcomers. So I hope uh, uh, it helps. So now we have written the conversions. So we have written the logic of converting, but we need to host it somewhere. And we need to tell API server that it has to refer uh, call that conversion. So for hosting, we will create a webhook for conversions. And as you can see, we are using Cube Builder to create a webhook. So ultimately, it will expose an endpoint, a HTTPS endpoint, which API server can call to do the conversion. And internally, the setup webhook with manager is going to uh, use our code only uh, that we have written just now. So that is done by controller runtime. And as you can see, uh, we have written uh, in this is the uh, deployment that we will do the webhook deployment. And here you can see that we have exposed a port 9443. Uh, that is the webhook uh, server, which is exposed uh, using the protocol TCP. So this way we have exposed the code that we just know, uh, wrote through a webhook. And now we need to tell the API server somehow to call this. So We'll see how to do that. So that has to be done. So one more thing, uh, the webhook have to be exposed through a service. So we are doing it here. 
and it has to be a https endpoint so we are using 443 okay, and uh, this is the place like in the crd where we are telling the api server that it has to call the webhook service whenever uh, conversion is required so after doing all this uh, setup we are good with conversion and uh, it will work we already get a flag for like five minutes left so i'll quickly uh like go through the rest of the video and so now we'll show the previous examples that uh we saw in our uh, like presentation and how we can resolve them after writing these conversion functions so we'll again apply those same yamls and we'll see that in the annotations we have uh the objects through the, which we can retrieve the data so these are the logs like we are seeing for the uh, conversions that are control conversion webhooks are enabled and they are running. So whenever we apply any object, we can uh, get the API server can call the conversion webhook and do the changes. So we apply the V2 object. And we can see now. We, when we try to fetch the same object in v1 format, we have the passport number retained. We haven't lost anything. And you can see in the annotation, we have the uh, v2 object. Here we go. Yeah, so same goes with v1 object. When we tries to fetch it in the v2 format, we have the passport details here with the passport number. We don't have expiry and issue date because in the v1 we don't have any data for that. So we just had passport uh, number in the v1, so we are getting it in v2. Yeah, that's it. So a uh, quick recap. I'm not yeah. So to support customers consuming different version, we need to write API conversions and we can use conversion gen to some extent like for the common fields conversion, but for the manual conversion, you need to do it by yourself. And for doing it, we understood about the hub and spoke model. And whenever we want any conversion, we first convert from spoke to hub and then from hub to spoke. In this way, we can convert any functions and could reduce the number of conversion function. So these uh, are the reference link. We have a similar and the exact project like the first one is pointing to the, this project and we have one more project which is similar to this telling more about the API conversion. You can refer it here and now we are open for any Q&A.